Hello, so today I'm going to do a review on this mask. Now it's in a GP5 satchel, but it's not a GP5, it's just the satchel is included free with it. It is an MSA Hour, I believe it's pronounced S3 or 3S. Um, and this is a mask that's very cheap for what it is on the surplus market right now. So this is the mask. Ignore the little bits of dirt on the lens, otherwise it's completely fine. So that's the mask. It's a panoramic lens mask with five rubber straps on it. It's got a voice diaphragm there, there's your 40mm valve, uh, intake valve, and there's your XL valve. So this one was made in 1996 according to the rubber XL valve, and the strap says 99. So I'm going to go and say this is a 96 mask because that part's older, regardless. So it's got an oral nasal cup on the inside, that's what it looks like on the inside. Um, oral nasal cup, and it's also got two Tissot tubes that go to each bit of the panoramic lens. So it's pretty good at staying, not fogged, you know, staying clear. So the other brilliant thing about this um, is it also came with a sealed filter, which is pretty modern, because it says 2013-12 on there. So I'm not sure if that's the expiry or the production date, but regardless, getting a sealed filter with that sort of date on it is very good for a mask that's under £30 in surplus. So I bought this through Amazon. It was available on Prime, and I think the seller was Old Shop. Now, the only thing I'm going to complain about with him is that he sells GP5s and says they're replica masks and the filters do not contain asbestos. But regardless, we're not reviewing a GP5 here, we're reviewing the MSA Hour 3S. So, I'm going to put this Polish filter on it. Um, I think it was Bing R, if I got his name right, that recommended this mask to me, so a big thank you to him. And I'm also going to um, do some helmet tests for him in this video because he asked me could I test it with various helmets, so I'm going to do that in this video. It also has a neck strap, which is really nice, which means you can just hang it loosely from your neck when you're not wearing it. So, let's get the mask on. Let's get those straps untucked from behind my head. Get my chin in there. Right, now let's tighten it. So there you go, that's the mask on, and as you can see, it's not really fogging up. So if I put my hand there, see it pressure checks all right. Well, let's just quickly get the banana oil out and give it a test. I've had this filter open for a while, but I'm pretty sure it still works against vapors. Yeah, I can't smell that, let's just go around the neck of the mask. Yeah, all good, I can't smell anything. So. Uh, let's try it with some helmets then. But yeah, this is a very good panoramic mask, especially for the sub £30 you can get these as surplus now for late 1990s models. To give you some idea, if you were buying this mask new, it would be close to £200 or above. So um, getting it for £30 is almost like paying 10% of the price. So first we'll try it with a British Armed Police Guardian helmet. This is a Mark 3A. Sorry, not Mark 3. This is a Kevlar 3A helmet, which is basically based on the US Pascot and similar helmets. So let's see, will this go on alright? I'm not going to try and do the straps up with all these, because as said, with lots of, as I said before in other videos basically, with lots of helmets, um, to get them to work with masks you need a custom strap fitted that obviously gives you a lot of more room to play about with because of the design mask. But that sits neatly enough on it's not going to be the most secure helmet but if you fit a custom strap to it it would stay on and it's protecting the bits of your head it's meant to protect and it's not cutting into my vision all that much so yeah it would certainly work with um a pascot style helmet right now let's try a british mark 7 helmet so this is the current but being replaced helmet of the british armed forces Oh, that fits on really well. Okay, the slightly bigger curve on the inside of the Mark 7 means that this fits really well. And the strap actually comes down quite far as well. And I don't think the strap is going to do up with me having this mask on as said, because they don't normally work with masks and let you, let you fit a custom strap. But that actually goes on better than I expected. I can do the strap partially up. So there we go. Yeah, that's perfectly comfortable and that's going to stop the helmet coming off your head. And as I said, it's not cutting into your vision, but the helmet is protecting all the bits it's meant to protect. So, yeah, very good. That works well. 
So now let's try a riot helmet. Now this will probably be the hardest one to get to work with it because still got that strap partially done up there. Gonna strangle me with my own helmet. If I can work out how that's not detached, even though I did the. Hmm. Come on, what are you not undoing? Excuse me a moment. <laughs> Why is this being so awkward? I thought I'd undone the strap to this, but apparently it's still sticking on. Right, I'll be back in a moment. Right, there we go, it's off. The strap had got caught in that helmet loop, so it wasn't that the strap was still done up, it was that the strap basically got tangled in the um, bit it attaches to. So I'll just tighten the straps on this again slightly so I've got an airtight seal. There we go. Now let's see if a riot helmet fits, because if a riot helmet fits, then this is a really good mask for compatibility of most helmets. So let's try and get this on from the back, but I don't think it's going to fit. Ooh, we might be able to get a really tight fit. Okay, it fits, but it's not a comfortable fit. The visor also does go down far enough. So the riot helmet would work on there, but as I said, the issue is that it's not a comfortable fit. Now, a riot helmet with the right sort of liner might go on and off this helmet better, but basically, because of how the straps and the buckles work on this helmet, they are going to interfere a bit with riot helmets. But as seen, you can get a riot helmet on. It just won't be comfortable. But yeah, so very, very good actually. I'm very impressed. Now, I'll just do one quick test. I'm not going to shoot this now, but what I want to see is if I get my pistol out, which is a Beretta PX4 um, air gun replica, can I try and do this in frame for you? Can I see the iron sights all right? And the answer is yes, I can. Let's try it with both eyes. Yep. Yep. So there's not enough distortion with this mask to actually prevent you looking down an iron sight. That is absolutely fine, which is good to know. So yeah. You could definitely use a pistol with this mask. I haven't tried shouldering a rifle with it, but I imagine it's possible. But as far as I'm aware, this mask was actually manufactured for industry use. Um, not like military use, but... Regardless, it still seems to be a very good panoramic lens mask because you still seem to be able to, if you want to, use it with a pistol. So, yeah. So, yeah, thank you for Bing for rec recommending this mask to me. People have been recommending this mask to me for ages, but it's only been recently that they've started turning up on the surplus market in the UK for about £30. Pre prior to this, you had to order them from Eastern Europe with a fair bit of shipping. So they worked out with sort of 40 to 50 pounds in total. But yeah, I'm really impressed. So, as I said, easy to do the straps up. They're actually good quality straps. As you can see, they're um, straps that kind of have those rubber ridges along them. And then you just pull it through a buckle. And then you undo it through a buckle. The, and these straps have the properly decent fat bits of rubber at the end so they're not going to come out of the strap by accident like the pewter mask does that Chinese one I've got which is similar but not very good um, another nice thing about this is the exhale valve on the bottom can be twisted round and adjusted no drinking tube on this as said because it's not a military mask whether or not MSA do a military style variant of this of a drinking tube I don't know but there you go there's the front of it this is obviously a German manufactured one as it says F unten on it um, but yeah, you can see MSA there. But yeah, this is a very, very nice mask. So anybody who is thinking of getting a mask for prepping purposes, being able to get one of these in the UK for under £30 that comes... It's with a GP5 satchel, so don't get me wrong, it's not an amazing satchel. But basically getting a mask that comes with a sealed filter, and it's an ABEC one. I imagine, although it doesn't say on here, it says ABEC HGST, so it's an industrial filter. I imagine this will give you some particle protection, because obviously the charcoal has to be kept in there so it doesn't come out. Um, that's very, very good price-wise, because generally, sometimes buying, even if they're expired, sealed ABEC filters like this would at least be £10 from a lot of sellers. So, for getting, even though it's a cheap GP5 satchel, getting the mask um, in sort of new old stock condition, a sealed ABEC filter, 
and a GP5 satchel for under £30 is pretty amazing. So yeah, so as I said, old chop, I'm not a fan that they pretend that GP5 filters, are, uh, their GP5 masks are replicas and the filters don't contain asbestos, but in terms of offering these masks for a good price, yes, that is a good deal. So thank you again to Bing for recommending this mask to me, and yeah, it is a very good to buy mask, especially if you can get them for under £30 like I did.